All right, folks, simple talk today on loop antennas. And in particular, I'd like to talk about small loop antennas, which we can use for uh, reception and mainly for HF uh, frequencies. So what is a small loop? Well, by definition, it's a, obviously a loop of wire. And the circumference or length of the wire um, has to be less than or equal to 10% of the wavelength. Now, this doesn't have to be a hard 10%. If it's 15, 20, it's pretty much going to work. The point is the length can't be a wavelength long or integers wavelength long. The general rule of thumb is it performs like a small loop antenna if the length of wire that makes the loop is less than 10% of the wavelength uh, that you're interested in. And generally these are used for uh, receiving only. They do not make very good antennas for transmitting, but they make great antennas for receiving. And here's kind of an idea. Um, so you have a uh, radio station or some uh, you know, signal that you want to pick up and the loop has to be in the same uh, plane and pointing at the source of the antenna. So in this case the loop is uh, pointing at the radio station and it's, it's vertical in the plane of the signal and that will give the max signal to your radio. If the loop is perpendicular uh, to the transmit station that will be a null. So that's one interesting uh, fact for small loops. Now let's get into uh, the real deal. So we have a loop antenna here, right? With square loop that we did uh, with these dimensions, x and y. And like I said, the circumference or the length of all this has to be less than about 10% of the wavelength. So if we look at the loop equations, there's something you have to understand. It's called the magnetic flux. And that is equal to the area of the loop times the magnetic field. And this equation is valid long as the area and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So if this is the radio signal here, you would have the loop this way. And remember, the magnetic field lines essentially circle around the transmitting antenna. So that would make the magnetic fields basically coming out of this page. So clearly the area that and the magnetic field, which is again would be coming out of this page, are perpendicular. So this equation holds. Well, area we can replace with x times y, and b is for radio waves anyway. The magnetic field is going to be a time varying function, and that is the that is the basic principle of radio waves. They have an electric field and a magnetic field, which are both time varying. They're not uh, static. All right, so hopefully you guys are getting that. And so again, this is our loop. This is the flux equation. This is it in details. Now the voltage or the EMF induced at those two terminals, okay, is going to be equal to essentially the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. So we can see that the we're going to get more voltage or more signal when the area of this loop is bigger. So if you're interested in making a receiving loop, it is generally, if you're interested in weak signals, you want the area of that loop to be pretty close to the max. And again, the bounds are that the length of this wire essentially has to be less than 10% of the wavelength that you're interested in. So if you're down at the 80 meter band or the AM radio band, this can be pretty significant. It can easily be six foot by six foot type uh, dimensions. And it will still fall under a small loop condition. So I just wanted to show you how uh, voltage is induced at these two terminals because it's basically following uh, this equation. And this equation is called Faraday's Law and my god it's everywhere from cassette tapes to 
uh, AC that's powering your house right now so that you can sit back and watch this video is all thanks to Faraday's Law. Anyway, let's get into uh, my setup here and how I'm using this loop with a SDR radio. So I have the small loop. Uh, I generally want to isolate it from the 50 ohm SDR, so that's why I picked this 9 to 1 ballon. Kind of assumes this is a high impedance and it transfers it down to a low impedance for the SDR. And this works pretty good. I would call this an okay setup. However, this would be a much better setup, mainly because if you're interested in, say, the 80 meter band, you would like to put an 80 meter band bandpass filter here and then an LNA. And why did I put the bandpass filter before the LNA? Well, that's very simple. SDR radios are phenomenal devices, but one thing they majorly lack is any kind of front end filtering. So if you put this loop up and you live in some urban area, this thing is going to be bombarded with strong AM broadcast signals, uh, FM signals, whatever. It's going to have an extreme SNR, and if you just put that directly into your SDR, there's a very good chance that this SDR could be saturated by the strong AM broadcast signals. So by putting this filter here, we'll essentially knock those guys out, and generally the signals that you're interested in the 80 meter band are going to be not so strong. So that's why we put the LNA here. If we put the LNA right here, we would boost up the AM signals, which is what we're trying to not do. So all the frequencies between basically 500 kilohertz to 1.7 megahertz, uh, we're trying to knock out. Now, if you're interested in AM broadcast band, well then by all means, pick the filter to cover that or generally you probably won't need a filter at all but uh, this is still even a very good setup for AM broadcast DX you know you tune set this up at uh, nighttime and you will definitely hear all the East Coast uh, AM signals but uh, obviously we're interested in weak signal stuff so this is the preferred setup and it works really really well and again, these are the equations, just so you guys can understand. If you make a loop of wire here, and this is going to have a voltage at these two terminals, and that voltage is equal to the derivative of the magnetic flux. So it's pretty evident here, using, looking at these equations, that if we're trying to pick up weak signals, that is signals that would have a very weak magnetic signal, the only way to increase this voltage is to increase the area of this loop. Now some would say, well, I can do many terms of wire and that will put an N factor here. Uh, that is true. However, one major downfall of doing that is now this turns into uh, more of like an inductor and not a very good antenna. So I generally stick with one loop of wire and then uh, try to make the area such that I can maximize the area, which then by this equation will maximize the voltage that's at those two terminals. And this, by the way, was the same antenna or setup that uh, Heinrich Hertz used to prove the existence of radio waves. So you can now recreate this and uh, relive history uh, you probably won't get the Nobel Prize in Physics. Um, he already got that um, many, many years ago. There's your history lesson. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel.